what is this stuff? What is a large language model? All of this starts from a quote from 1957 by John Rupert Firth, a specialist in linguistics, who said, you shall know a word by the company it keeps. You shall know a word by the company it keeps. If I say, I'm brewing the tea, for most English speakers, it's pretty apparent that I'm talking about a beverage made of hot water and a dry leaf. Now, if I say, I'm spilling the tea, this is different. One word changes the meaning of another, another word. There are statistical distributions in how words work. Right? We all know this from the language that we use. If I say, I pledge allegiance to the, the next logical word is. If I say, God save the, or king, that's, a lot of you need to update your databases. Um, <laughs> You know these statistical representations. That's what language models are. They are nothing more than big statistical databases. Here's how they work. This is the unhelpful version. This is from 2017. This is a paper called Attention is All You Need. We will not get into the mathematics of this. It's not fun, and it's only 8.30. Imagine text, lots and lots of texts uh, from all over the place. Imagine text is as a pizza, right? And your cookbook is a model. The way these things are constructed is a company like Anthropic, or Google, or Facebook, or OpenAI, goes around the world and eats every possible pizza, right? In addition to being violently ill, they're taking notes. And when they're done, all those notes get collated into a cookbook, right? The model is the cookbook, which is important because if you've ever done any cooking, you know that there's no actual food in a cookbook, right? It's just recipes for how you can make your own food. And then when you ask a model, tell me how to make a pizza, it will spit out some understanding, even if the pizza is something that you've never heard of before. That's how these things work. They take enormous amounts of data, mostly text, ingest them, summarize them down to mathematical distributions, and then when you talk to them through an interface, they spit out what they remember from the notes. The original text is not in the model. Really important. Ask it for creamed corn and mushroom pizza, or pineapple and mushroom pizza. Now, you can argue about whether pineapple belongs in pizza or not, but the models know it because they've probably seen it or some variation of it. Right? That's how these language models work. They are nothing more than libraries of probabilities, guessing what's next. How do we talk to them? We talk to them through something called prompt engineering, which is fancy for talking. Again, you shall know a word by the company it keeps. If you talk to a model with very few words, you will get a statistical distribution of the most common things associated with those words. So if I give a model like, write a short paragraph about how AI is being used in marketing, this is Claude, it spit out a very bland, kind of boring, very generic paragraph. Why? I didn't give it very many words. I gave very few words, and so mathematically it's saying, well, what are the words most commonly tied to AI and marketing? And this is what it spits out. It's generic. If I say, write a short paragraph about how AI is being used in marketing with a focus on transformer-based generative AI, such as those found in GPT-4 and Claude 2, now the text changes. Why? I gave it more words. I gave it more relevant words, so now the statistical distributions change, and it can dig down further into its library and say, well, you want to know about transformers, which means you don't want to know about diffusers, and you don't really care about predictive analytics. You really care about generative AI. And so the, the text it, it delivers is better. If I say, you're an artificial intelligence expert, you know AI, machine learning, deep learning, et cetera, et cetera. You also know marketing, digital marketing, customer journeys. Your first task is to write a short paragraph about the use of generative AI, and so on and so forth. We get a much better piece of text. Why? Again, more relevant words. When you're doing prompt engineering, it's all about more relevant words. There's a framework that we have, but this general concept applies to pretty much every model out there. It's going to apply to Microsoft Copilot. It's going to apply to Google Docs. The more relevant words you use, the better it performs. The framework, the structure that we use, is called RACE, Role, Action, Context, Execute. If you want to construct reasonably effective prompts across platforms, this is the structure you use. So you would say things like, your role, you are a Google Analytics certified professional. You know Google Analytics 4, Google Tag Manager, Google Looker Studio, BigQuery. We're giving it role-based words that give it guidelines. Start digging up probabilities on these things. Action. Your first task is to examine this channel of grouping data and analyze the overall composition of site traffic. You will be analyzing for marketing channel diversity. 
Again, more words, more relevance, more statistical distributions. Context, here's a whole bunch of data, right? So this is data exported out of Google Analytics. Execute, analyze the composition of the site traffic and provide recommendations in bullet point format for marketers' next steps to increase traffic. Right? This is the format. When you put this in, what it spits out is your analysis. Here's your, the data, the largest sources of traffic, and here's eight things that you can do to improve your channel traffic diversity. Now again, this works in ChatGPT, it works in Claude, it works in Llama. This structure will help you get the most out of any large language model that you're working with. 